Hello students, this is your SD sir again from the Temple of Excellence, Vidyashram Pre-University College. Hope everything is doing fine. Dear students, in my first concept class today, I will be discussing the chapter Electric Fields and charges. What do we actually study in this chapter? A very, very fundamental concept called electric charge. Right in your first textbook, chapter 1 to the last chapter, alternating current, we continuously deal with something called electric charge. Therefore, in my today's class, we will have a thorough understanding of what is an electric charge. We study the properties of electric charge and in this session, we will also understand a few methods of charging a body. So very simple. What do I do in this session? I will understand what is the meaning of an electric charge. I will understand the physical properties of an electric charge. And then we will also understand the different methods of charging a body. Now dear students, before going into depth, the understanding of electric charge, we will first try to understand something called as electrostatics a very important term something what we call as electrostatics in my previous discussion i had told the first two chapters charges and fields potential and capacitance they are connectors why did they call as connectors because all those concepts are required to understand the master concept electric current today please note that both those chapters electric charges and fields electric potential and capacitance they are discussed under a unit called electrostatics. Therefore, first I will understand what is electrostatics. Now this word electrostatics can be dissected into two different terms. The first term I call electron plus the second term I call statics. Electron plus statics. These two words put together will give me something called electrostatics. Electron plus statics. My atomic structure told me that electron is fundamentally a negatively charged particle. I consider it to be generally a charge. Electron got from the Greek term electra, negative charge. And also, my first PUC mechanics told statics is something which is at rest. A body is static means it is at rest. Electron statics charges at rest. 
so skeletally dear friends the study of charges which are at rest the properties of charges which are at rest is what we call electrostatics a very skeletal definition the branch of physics which describes the properties of electric charges which are at rest is what we call electrostatics then what are the properties we study here we study the electric force acting on a charge at rest electric field due to a charge at rest electric potential due to a charge at rest maybe torque acting on a dipole due to a charge at rest these are all the different features different properties we are understanding with respect to a charge which is at rest discussed under electrostatics and therefore we also call it as static electricity so my first thought for you all is to know what is electrostatics where we tell it is a branch of physics explaining the different properties of electric charges which are at rest what were the properties we told maybe electric force acting on that charge maybe electric field due to that charge completely in depth next we study electric potential torque etc and all these things will give me what is called electrostatics now my dear friends a very important concept what we call electric charges right from your lower class the word charge has been used umpteen number of times many number of times but did we ever make an attempt to understand what is a charge did we ever screw up our brains trying to know what is an electric charge if not in today's session i will be doing that the definition says a charge is a fundamental property of matter please do i write a charge is a fundamental a very basic property of matter because of which matter exhibits electrical effects very beautiful definition a charge is a fundamental property a basic property of matter because of which matter exhibits electrical effects which means to understand if there has to be any electrical effect there has to be the presence of a charge but in that what do i understand we consider the following examples i will consider a conductor which conducts electric current how is it possible a conductor has abundance of electrons and we told moving electrons electrons in motion constitute electric current maybe a copper wire aluminum wire etc which means 
absence of those electrons in the conductor will not constitute electric current. So no electrical effect called current if there is absence of electrons ionization in a gas. If there are no positive ions or negative ions in a gas, ionization is not possible. Again, absence of an electrical effect. A very, very beautiful phenomenon called photoelectric effect. Light of suitable frequency falls on a metal, immediately free electrons are liberated. My dear students, if those free electrons weren't present in the metal, no photoelectric effect. Therefore, any electrical effect happens only when there is presence of an electric charge. Therefore, my fundamental understanding says uh, electric charge is a fundamental property, a very basic property of matter because of which there can be electrical effects. Absence of charges clearly means there is no electrical effect. So, to summarize, within a single statement, please do know, if at all matter exhibits electrical effect, there has to be presence of electric charges. Now, slightly to upgrade my thought, level 2 definition of an electric charge it says charge is also the physical property of matter fundamentally i understood it constitutes electric effect now it is also the physical property of matter where matter exerts electrical forces because of charge matter exerts electrical forces and also responds to electrical forces beautiful the statement says charge is that physical property physical property of matter because of which matter exerts electrical forces and responds to electric forces. What do I mean by this? Very well my experiments have shown there are two kinds of charges which I consider. A positive charge and a negative charge. I will confine myself now to a positive charge as well as a negative charge. So I consider two positive charges plus Q and plus Q. What is the nature of interaction between them depends upon their polarity. Both of them are like charges, positive charges. And I know like charges always repel each other. Repel, just go away. Once we have a tag fight with our friends, we go away. We repel away. The word repel means going away from each other. Dear students, could this repulsion happen if there was no charges? No. Only because I have two like charges, an interaction in the form of repulsion has taken place. Similarly, if I have unlike charges, plus Q and minus Q, 
we see they always attract each other they come towards each other and this interaction is possible only because there are two unlike charges see beautiful repulsion or attraction in single terms interaction is possible only due to the presence of charges again if the charges are absent there are no electrical interactions so two definitions i come across here the first one basic fundamental definition of electric charge which means only if there are charges matter exhibits electrical effects the physical definition says only if electrical charges are present there are electrical interactions so for any electrical interaction to happen for any electrical effect to be witnessed for any electrical phenomenon to take place there has to be presence of electric charges now going to the next concept a very important concept what we call as properties of electric charges very important because this is either asked for two marks or three marks very frequently in your examination properties of electric charges very very important question either ask for two marks or three marks now after i have understood what is an electric charge after i have understood for any electrical interaction there has to be electric charges my now i will try to understand the properties of electric charges the first property is called additivity of electric charges very key property electric charges are additive in nature additivity of electric charges now what do i mean by that i will consider a system which has a large number of point charges i will highlight on the term point charge a system a conductor which has a large number of point charges what is a point object i will consider a train traveling from delhi to kanyakumari my dear friends the length of the train is very very small compared to the distance it travels i repeat the length of the train is very very small when compared to the distance it travels it is a point object just to say very small objects point something which cannot be extended so point charges means very small charges so if a system comprises of large number of point charges for example i say it comprises of plus q1 minus q2 plus q3 etc because charge can be positive or negative if a system comprises of large number of point charges the total charge 
of this system, the total, the entire charge of the system is the algebraic sum. Beautiful word. Algebraic sum. See, not simply the sum. Algebraic sum of all individual charges. He says, in a system, if you have large number of small point charges, then the total charge on that system is the algebraic sum of all those individual charges. My dear students, I would have simply used the word sum. No, I am using algebraic sum. What is the significance of that term algebraic? I told charges can either be positive or negative. So even the negative sum has to be considered, no? Taking into account both the positive sums and the negative sums is what we call the algebraic sum. So here afterwards, please be careful with this term. Even in Kirchhoff's laws, we use algebraic sum. Means to say the sum of both positive and negative charges. So very clearly I have written, if plus Q1 minus Q2 plus Q3 are the point charges in the system, then the total charges will be plus Q1 minus Q2 plus Q3 etc. The algebraic sum of all individual charges. Therefore, summating the algebraic sum, I write the total charge Q is equal to summation Qn, where this Qn is the sum of individual charges. And this is what is known as the principle of additivity of charges. So very clear, to repeat again, I have a system which comprises of small charges, point charges, which I call as plus Q1, minus Q2, plus Q3, etc. Then the total charge on that system is the algebraic sum, taking into account both the positive and the negative sum algebraic sum of all those individual charges. So total charge of a system is summation Qn, algebraic sum of all individual charges. Therefore we say additivity of electric charges. Electric charges are always additive in nature. Now we also try to talk about conservation of electric charges. We say the total charges of an isolated system is always conserved. Meaning to say the total number of positive charges is always equal to total number of negative charges in that system, conservation of charge. This is very, very important for the neutrality of matter, the electrical balance of a system that is established only because of the principle of conservation in any isolated system. What should happen? Charges should be conserved, which means the total number of positive charges is always equal to the total number of negative charges. Fine. The third one, the queen of all properties, quantization of electric charges. Very important. 
quantization of electric charges the most basic phenomenon in physics quantization to understand what is quantization we will take an example to see the energy that is thrown out from the sun radiations carrying energy from the sun although they appear to be continuous although it seems sun is radiating energy continuously it doesn't happen no source of energy can ever be continuous they are in small discrete discontinuous packets what we call as quanta or what is also called as photons whenever there are volcanoes earthquakes you see the army people dropping food packets dropping shelters from helicopters the same way energy packets are thrown to us photons quanta they are discontinuous they are discrete in nature energy is quantized the same way the total charge of any system is also quantized coulomb says it is something like this take a maize cob and you can see the seeds of the maize cob although those yellow seeds they appear to be continuously distributed can i not remove each individual one they are quantized the seeds may appear to be distributed continuously but still i can pick each individual seed quantization of seeds which means although the charges on a conductor appears to be continuous it is not like that charges are distributed discreetly discontinuously in small packets on a conductor quantization of electric charge and the principle says the total charge of a system you consider any system the total charge of that system is an integral multiple very important term total charge on any system is an integral multiple of the most basic charge charge on any system should be an integral multiple of the most basic charge which is the most basic charge usually they ask a one mark question what is the magnitude of the most basic charge in nature and the most basic charge is the charge of an electron whose magnitude is 1.602 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb so what i understand here is any system the total charge on that should be an integral multiple of what the charge of an electron which means a system can have either one e charges in it or it can have two e charges in it or three e charges in it it has to be an integral multiple of the most basic charge which is the charge of an electron so we write q equals plus or minus n e plus or minus because there can be a positive charge 
or a negative charge n is an integer which is 1 2 3 etc and e is the charge of the electron therefore my question is can i transfer 3 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb of charges from one body to another i repeat the question can i transfer a charge of 3 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb from one body to another answer is no why this is not an integral multiple of the charge of an electron if e is 1.6 then next it has to be 3.2 next 4.8 only integral multiples of the charge of an electron can be transferred from one body to another therefore we say charges are quantized they are not continuously distributed they are discrete in amount discontinuous in amount and they can take only integral values of the charge of an electron so we knew charges are additive in nature charges are conserved and charges are quantized the next three very simple when it comes to the nature of charges they are scalar physical quantities you have understood scalar quantities which are expressed only to magnitudes not in direction so while describing the charge i told magnitude is important integral multiples therefore please to remember charges are scalar quantities and their SI unit is named after the scientist Coulomb charges are scalar physical quantities they are expressed only in terms of their magnitude and their SI unit is Coulomb next this is important I have two conductors a regular shaped conductor in the form of a sphere an irregular conductor irregular in geometry my dear students if you observe here the distribution of charges has taken place only on the outer surface we say electric charges reside only on the outer surface of a conductor why not inside next when i take up electrostatics of a conductor i will justify that electric field inside a conductor is zero just now note that at the center of a conductor there cannot be electric charges charges reside only on the outer surface of a conductor and finally the most basic which we already discussed interactions like charges repel each other we know that most basic law of nature which we also experience unlike charges attract each other all like charges have to go away from themselves they have to repel unlike charges attract and this is what is called cavendish law of electrostatics a very formulated law called cavendish law and these are the different properties of electric charges now Coming to the last topic of discussion in this session, we discuss something called as electrification or electrifying a body. 
What actually is this electrification? I have told it is the process of charging an uncharged body. If there is an uncharged body, any process of charging that is called as electrification. Electrifying means we are charging an uncharged body. How? It is either by adding electrons to that body or by removing electrons from it. How do we charge a body? Either we add electrons to that body or we remove electrons from that body. That is what is called electrification or charging. What happens if I add electrons to a body? By nature it becomes negatively charged. What happens if I remove electrons? By nature negative charges are taken out. It becomes positively charged. So any method I employ to charge an uncharged body is what we call electrification. There are three methods of charging a body. Charging by friction, charging by conduction and charging by induction. Third one better important, charging by induction. Whenever I try to charge a body through induction, induce, the word induce means give a property to a material which it did not have by birth. A conductor, an uncharged conductor do not have any charges by birth. I have to induce charges. Then I have to bring a charged conductor near it without physical contact. During induction, both the bodies should not be in physical contact. And after induction, both the bodies will acquire opposite nature of charges. If I am bringing a body A, which is positively charged towards an uncharged conductor B, then B will take negative charges. So this is what we call inducing charges. A body did not have charges by birth, but using a charged conductor, I am inducing. So in my next session, we'll talk more about the charging process. And very importantly, I take up something called Coulomb's law of electrostatics, probably the defining law of electrostatics. So just have a revision of whatever is done in this session, meaning of a charge, properties, and electrification. The next session will be crucially important. Waiting to meet you all until then. Thank you.